revelations about Jared Kushner, one of Trump's top advisors. Questions swirling about the Trump campaign and alleged ties to Russia. A secret communications channel between the Trump transition and the Kremlin. Some will read this as a sign, another sign of potential collusion. Recent news reports have suggested that Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, and Michael Flynn, who was briefly his national security advisor, opened a secret channel or a back channel to the Russians. The core question is whether or not they were using these meetings to just get to know the Russians or to undercut the Obama administration's sanctions. Mr. Kushner's attorney has said that the White House isn't commenting on any of the specifics of Jared Kushner's conversations or even of Michael Flynn's. But they argue that back channels are as old as diplomacy, and there's nothing wrong with that them. In general terms, uh, back channels are an appropriate part of diplomacy. Back channels like this are the regular course of business. I think uh, any time you can open uh, lines of communication with uh, anyone, whether they're good friends or not so good friends, is a, is a smart thing to do. The most important thing to remember about back channels is there are back channels once you are president, and there are back channels before you are president. Once you're president, it's not really a big issue because presidents frequently send their aides off on a quiet mission to go talk to the Iranians, as Barack Obama did, talk to the Pakistanis at a critical moment, as George W. Bush did. The big question here is what happens when there's a back channel during a transition? If the incoming administration is sending very different signals than the administration that's still in power is sending, you have the opportunity to undercut American policy. That risks a violation of the Logan Act, which is an act of Congress that goes back more than 200 years that prohibits individual citizens from interfering with the policy of the United States. And that's where you can get into a lot of trouble. There are plenty of examples of past presidents who have attempted to use uh, back channels during transitions. President Kennedy may have attempted that when his brother Bobby met an Izvesti, a reporter who was actually a Soviet spy, and talked about changing the relationship with the Soviet Union. But it looks like the content of that was pretty limited. It was just to send the message that President Kennedy looked forward to remaking the relationship with Russia. President Nixon has been accused of interfering during his transition time in an effort to keep the South Vietnamese from getting into a negotiation that could end the Vietnam War under a program that President Johnson had initiated. If that accusation is true, it would be pretty problematic. Two things make the communications engaged by the Trump transition team different from the past historical cases that we've seen. The first is the allegation that Mr. Trump's representatives wanted to use Russian communications channels, maybe some that would be shielded from American intelligence. But the second reason is that the Russians had just been involved in meddling with the American election, and intelligence reports were coming out suggesting they were trying to influence voters. That made any conversation with Russian officials, starting with the transition, pretty fraught. It's entirely possible that there was no illegality here, but that there was a lot of bad judgment. But the big question here is, did Jared Kushner or Michael Flynn or anyone else in the Trump transition promise the Russians that they would set aside or reverse the sanctions that President Obama was instituting against Russia in retaliation for the election time hacks. If they were, that would be a pretty serious charge. But no one's proven that yet, and no one really has an understanding yet of what the content of those conversations were.